Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Tex Mars is here to talk about a host of issues. A multi-time New York Times best-selling author, uh, uh, Air Force officer, of course, space and aeronautics uh, professor. He married my wife and I, and uh, Wanda, his wife, is such a sweetheart and uh, good family friends. I, I just time flies though. I we used to you know have dinner every once in a while. Stuff. Now we're so busy, we hardly ever see each other. We got to make time uh, to do that. But I really appreciate Tex Mars coming in the studio. Hey, Alex, great to be with you again. And uh, you know. Since I saw you last, it seems like the elite have ratcheted up their efforts at control of the people. And uh, I'm so amazed at their ability to do that. And yet I believe it's because of the psychological control. I actually call it a magic type of alchemy. Uh, and uh, I'm also delighted to, to see your organization here because you have people here that really care. And I want to say something before we begin. Uh, I want to mention that I knew you before you were nationwide. And I'll never forget the first time I saw you on television, cable access. Now, I want, I want people to understand something, Alex. You volunteered to go down to Austin Cable Access. You became the number one program on Austin Cable Access, which was very well watched, I might add. I watched you for the first time. A friend mentioned this, Alex Jones. You weren't getting paid a cent for this. You weren't in it for the money. If anybody believes that, that's nonsense. I saw you. Wanda was sitting by me. And I said, do you know why that man is going to succeed in riling up the establishment? He's exposing the evil doing in this world. And I'll tell you why he's going to succeed. Now, I've mentioned this to you before, but I want the audience to know. Three words, okay? Three words. A, a, a passion for truth. I guess that's four if you count the A. Passion, <laughs> passion for truth. I saw that in you. Of course, there were other things. Intelligence, the fact that you're willing to dig in to find out the information, the truth, uh, and you're able to, to articulate it. But more than anything, the passion for truth, that has not left you. I've, I'll tell you, I've watched, I've seen every one of your videos. I, I saw your Text, book. You're too nice. Most time I can't even watch well, myself. <laughs> well, you know, and when you do that, though, you're going to have enemies. Oh, I've got plenty. Oh, oh, yeah. Because passion for truth drives up those who want to reject the truth, who want to avoid it. So I, I thought I'd just add that. Well, Tex, let me just, I mean, I, please don't make it about me. I'm just an average person who's upset about what's happening, and I'm pretty obnoxious, but I've gotten a little bit better over time. But I have to add, you know, I learned more from Tex Mars than anybody else. I remember seeing people air your documentaries, your presentations in like 1992, 93, on Access Television when you were you know, just exposing the Clintons and the New World Order and just starting to write books about that subject. And, uh, you know, then Oklahoma City happened, and, and I saw you talking about that in 95, and that's right when I got on air. Mm. Uh, so, and, and, of course, think how many people you've also woken up other than me, and think of all the other people I've woken up and all our listeners have woken up. That's what's so beautiful about this. But as you said, evil, Katie bar the door, realizes we're breaking in on them, so they're throwing everything they've got oh. uh, right oh. now. And, and, I mean, just overall with the they, whole they world. Have, they have no shame. And, and now they have no fear of the people. The only ones they fear are the listeners of the Alex Jones show. Uh, the very few. Because your listeners also, and I get emails from them all the time, they too have a passion for truth. Alex, one of the things I would really like to hit today, the main subject, is something that is so uh, amazing that's going on. I believe they've gone a little bit beyond the police state. The police state is the umbrella. The taking away of our constitutional rights, of course, and, and the Bill of Rights, the stripping uh, of those rights. But now they are creating, and I want the people to understand this, it, it is so important, the elite are creating a new reality, a new reality. This is a psychological battering of the public. Now, we've already had, of course, 9-11 and the, the, the terrorist scare, the fear-mongering. But, and, and this gets to people's basic needs of survival, of security, of safety. And they're using this against us. But wait, now they're ratcheting it up. Not only are they causing engendering and stealing fear 
for our security, our safety, but now food, water, oil, which is the wellspring of our entire economy. These three resources, oil, water, food, they're, they're, they, they have decided to batter us into submission through these three key resources. Oil is everything for the economy. It means everything for people's pocketbooks. It means impoverishment as the price of oil escalates and goes skyward. Then there's food. If people can't eat, they can do nothing. You'll remember uh, Abraham Maslow back in the 60s developed this concept, which is true, has been confirmed over and over. When people are worried, concerned, frightened over their basic needs, I'm talking about food, I'm talking about water, okay, uh, and their ability to live a decent lifestyle, okay, shelter and so forth. When those needs are not met, they don't worry about abstract things like liberty and freedom. They do whatever the establishment says if they've been domesticated uh, so that they can, quote, get that standard back. What they don't know is this is this is the same elite that has engineered all this. And what you're saying, Tex, and I want to see you flesh this out because you wrote a book about it years ago, is what the United Nations said they do in the 60s in the Club of Rome. And now exactly. they've just republished the head of the CFR, Richard N. Haas's quote. I've been reading a lot on air. I'm sure you've seen it where he says... We're going to have a twin rail. This is in 93. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to have terrorism, which you know, we threaten them with to give up their rights. But then we're also going to have the global carbon tax in the name of saving the earth to regulate and bring in uh, neo-feudalism. And he said, this is a quote, this makes humanity the enemy, and then we can direct the state against the enemy. Now, that's a key. That's a key. Humanity is the enemy. You see, he here's the new reality. It's a contrived hoax, just as 9-11 was, just as the Oklahoma City bombing was, just as Al-Qaeda is a contrived hoax. Now we have a contrived hoax of resources. We, we, it's the, artificial the, scarcity. Absolutely. The lie is we're going into, now listen to this, an age of scarcity. And because of that, we all have to be good soldiers and agree to share with the rest of the world. We have to share our water. We have to share our food. And we have to but we're also... not going to share, uh, but we're not going to share uh, with the people. No, they claim there's a middleman called the New World oh, Order. Oh, absolutely. Well, they're getting enriched by all this. And if the price of gasoline at the pump goes to $10 a gallon, quit your belly aching, man. I mean, we're doing you a favor even letting you drive a car. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're helping you. You, you don't really deserve this. I mean, there's a scarcity of oil. And it's because of peak oil. And, and then they can also blame Alaska and point at a few hippies they finance as NGOs when we've had all the oil company executives on, more oil than Saudi Arabia, and the government isn't going to let it out of the ground. Oh, but hippies are stopping them <laughs> from getting it. Well, yeah, we haven't had, a, for example, in the oil area, we haven't had a new refinery built since the 1970s. They blame it on the environmental movement, but wait, who actually funded... Who actually founded and sponsor today these environmental organizations? Oil company, Sierra, Nature Conservancy. Sure, the, the mass of their money doesn't come from the unwashed it. hippies. Rockefellers founded it. Absolutely. And, and we got the old company documents in 2001. Associated Press did where they said in '95 in a, in a consortium meeting, the Big Ten, they said Exxon, Mobil, all of them before they'd merged. They said we are going to buy up these 214 refineries and shut them down to create an artificial bottleneck. Yeah, they, these are artificial hoax, hoaxes. Now, they, then they have the media to control this. And then comes the idea of peak oil. Now, you know, I come from East Texas. My brother was a, was a high-level executive in Sun Oil Company. And he used to sit around with me. We used to talk about this. Listen, back in Port Natchez, Texas. So and, was my grandmother. Is that dad. right? Yeah, my great-grandpa worked for Sun Oil. And back in the 70s, you know, when we had the, big, the first big energy crisis uh, with Nixon in office, and there were lines at the gas pump at the service stations miles long, my brother was just shocked about this because, remember, he was with Sun Oil. He was able to see the figures of, of what their inventories were. He says the United States is brimming with oil. There's no cutoff from the Middle East. Brimming with oil. And the tankers continued to come in, but it wasn't being refined because they had decided it's time to drive up the price. Now we know that Kissinger agreed with the Shah of Iran and others to allow the price of oil to escalate. That's now public. And now we're, we're seeing the same thing Called now. a conspiracy theory in the 70s. Yeah. And, and here's an interesting thing, too. Even at, at this time, 30 years ago, my brother told me something interesting. He said the oil fields... The oil wells that we first drilled and thought we'd brought all the oil out of the ground from. 
And then we capped them. You know, they put all the concrete and closed them back up. We're going at Sun Oil, and I'm sure this is true of every oil company, we're going back now 20, 30 years later, uncapping them, and guess what? We find they're full of oil again. It just comes back. It, it replenishes. It percolates up from the earth. There's processes and going there's on. And hundreds of under top earth. universities are proving that it is not dead dinosaurs. No, no, that's silly. fossils. Again, again, uh, more and more fossil, fraud. Fossil oil. Yeah, that's that's sort of silly stuff. I think this all came about uh, in the, at the turn of the century. You know, uh, Rockefeller with the Standard Oil Company had a monopoly that was broken up supposedly by the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, but 1906, and it was just in the news the other day, they came back and they admitted the family owns the company, and they're about to fire Rex Tillerson because he won't go along with global warming. 